I will ask you to just sit in there. It will be, probably be good to just hear Hinga a bit. Then uh, Bilo, I'm sure, having been in the petroleum industry, is here uh, uh, to hear from you also, and you would also want to hear his take. And the same with uh, Abraham. Then uh, we can conclude with the CS National Treasury. If we take about 20, 20 minutes each, if you can take less, the better. And if you have uh, a written presentation that you can share with the Secretariat, uh, it would help us also. If you want to project, I'm sure there are those who wanted to project, uh, projectors are ready also. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair and Go Chair and Honorable Members of this uh, National Dialogue Committee. Thank you for inviting us. Let me confirm, Honorable Members, that we did receive the invitation dated 24th of October to appear before this National uh, Dialogue Committee. And uh, we have a written presentation which uh, we have submitted. Um, uh, Chair, outside the formal uh, presentation, let me say we are all concerned, uh, particularly the Ministry of Energy, at the cost of living and energy being uh, a major co-driver of inflation because it is basically is employed, energy is employed to, in very many facets of our lives, uh, from transportation to powering industry, uh, and so on and so forth. So, so anything that impacts on the cost of energy impacts on the inflation and the cost of living. And therefore, we are, as you are, looking for ways uh, every, uh, every day to see how to bring down and make our economy a competitive destination for for investors where cost of living for our people uh, who are employed in industry would be able to make this econ economy uh, a competitive destination so that you can attract investors uh, chair let me say uh, as opening remarks that um, the recent happenings um, particularly the post covid uh, recovery period where we've seen inflation in economies like the US, Canada souring to a high of 9% is something that uh, is being seen maybe in the last, what, 22 years uh, where uh, we see Fed uh, raising interest uh, from a low of 1.5% 1, 1 uh, to a five point, I think 5.4 percent today, and then therefore uh, causing the challenge of um, uh, dollar unavailability in that uh, tightening of monetary policy. And uh, as seeing, particularly in the petroleum sector, an availability of dollars uh, because investors find it better to have their dollar sitting in a uh, in, uh, in investments, uh, cash deposits, as opposed to allowing them to trade. But that is basically a post-COVID uh, recovery of the um, inflation where the U.S. has decided to basically mop up the dollars uh, they had issued uh, during COVID to sustain their economies. And, and so that challenge is there. It's a global challenge. Uh, those of us who trade in tea are unable to sell our tea in the international market because of an availability of dollars in Pakistan, in Egypt, in Iran. And whereas uh, we need those dollars to procure products which we don't produce as Kenya, like petroleum, pharmaceuticals, and uh, all the other products. And uh, lately, when we have uh, a deficit in food because of the climate change issues and the fact that... Uh, we have not been able to sustain uh, food security. We need dollars to basically uh, import food to sustain our people. Um, and this has seriously impacted, uh, and like I said, uh, energy, petroleum alone, uh, uh, honorable members, uh, do have a requirement of 500 million US dollars on a monthly basis. We import products into Kenya worth $500 million on a monthly basis. Uh, we bring in eight cargos, four cargos of diesel. A cargo is 80,000 80, metric tons. We bring in four cargos of PMS, that is uh, 
so power petrol and we bring in one cargo of DPK dual purpose kerosene. 